everybody, and welcome to one of my favorite nights of the month. It is our lymphedema patient roundtable. We're so glad you joined us. We know you're logging on right now. I've got so many people on the screen. I've got to introduce everybody, and I'll do it really quick, super speedy. But I want to say that we have, we're very honored to have a special guest with us tonight, Veronica Sineris, who is also known as Lymphy Strong, a huge advocate in the lymphedema community. Veronica Hartbells, we are so happy to have you with us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm very humbled and, and honored to be with you. Well, we consider it an honor and we want to talk about the National Lymphedema Network Conference that many people just came back from. Alexa Ercolano came back from it. Cam Ayella was the star of social media. Betty Westbrook was there. It was really a hot time in the old city of Beantown, Boston. So we will be talking about that. Our regular panelists, Mary Castleberg, who is a lymph compression therapy consultant, veteran fighting lymphedema, Kelly Bell, Angela Jones, who brings her spirit, her smile, her joy, and her insights. We so appreciate you. Amanda Sobe, motivational speaker and trainer. We want to talk about you training Amy Rivera in an amazing bodybuilding competition. Nazarene Starner, she, you would not believe how many years she has been a certified lymphedema therapist, but she also deals primarily with breast cancer patients and it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So quite appropriate that she has pink in her background there. <laughs> and so does Lymphy Strong. Cam Ayella, how the heck are you? Doing great. He always shows up at the last minute, so I get <laughs> nervous. I mean, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to make me, like, my blood pressure go up or something? No, just trying to cause a little suspense. Ah, oh, well, you did well. You did well, my friend. And hey, let's get things started with you, Kim. By the way, I forgot Catherine Rosenberg, didn't I? Catherine Rosenberg, also a fantastic advocate for the lymphedema community. So with that, that was like my quickest introduction ever, wasn't it? Yay for me. Kim Ayala, <laughs> you have a special thing going on this weekend for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Tell all. Yes. Yeah, so um, anybody who's interested, it's totally free. It's going to be via Zoom uh, this Saturday. That's October the 16th at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, there's two amazing um, oncologists and breast uh, surgeons in the Houston area, but it's all about breast cancer awareness, uh, screening, detection, prevention, and then different treatments. So uh, it's part of one of the nonprofits, the Lions Club that I, I work with in Houston and an awesome lymphedema therapist in Houston. So we're putting that on. So if you want more details, shoot me a direct message and I'll get you guys the free Zoom link for this Saturday. So that's awesome. really excited. It is a Zoom meeting. Will it be recorded so if people can't catch it live, they can see it another time? Yes, absolutely. And then we'll we'll post it to, to YouTube. And if you want to see that, I'll post it on my Instagram as well. That's fantastic. Wonderful service to the lymphedema community. Thank you so much, Cam, for all you do. And Nazreen, you mostly, 75% of your patients are breast cancer patients. And I'm always struck by the one, two punch, you know, you get a breast cancer diagnosis and then only to discover later on that you have lymphedema. This is so common, isn't it? It is very, very common. And it's, it's sometimes for a lot of these patients is the hardest thing for them to deal with because it's chronic at that point. So there's so many things with breast cancer between the surgery, lymph node removal, chemotherapy, radiation that can all cause damage to the lymphatic system. So this is something that it, at our location, I work for Cleveland Clinic, we continue to follow these patients throughout all their surgeries. Sometimes I'm seeing these patients for several years because yeah. the risk is there for these patients. You know, it's so important to get the right treatment as well. And full disclosure, you know, I'm Brenda Viola. I work for Olympa Press and I truly get excited about our garments because we have an upper extremity garment that targets this underarm area that is so hard to reach and so often is where lymphedema 
lives. So I want to encourage anybody, if you know someone who has had breast cancer surgery, they're dealing with lymphedema, we'd love to help you out and share with you. We've got so many great testimonies. Kim, we just had a testimony of one of your patients. Uh, we shared it on an all company meeting and she has had a breast cancer. She had a double mastectomy, double mastectomy. Mm -hmm. and the lympha press upper extremity garment, the comfy arm sleeve just changed her life really. Yeah. And what was really motivating and inspiring about that particular patient is, you know, we really don't talk too much about the psychological impacts of, of lymphedema. And she had, had, you know, kind of given up hope. She wasn't able to do a lot of the daily activities that she loved, like sewing and knitting that was causing her some pain and discomfort in her underarms mm -hmm. from her breast cancer. So after we got her set up with her lympha press, with her uh, comfy sling that treated her chest and her axilla region, she regained better range of motion, less swelling, so her arms felt less full. So she was able to resume a lot of those daily activities that you know, she wasn't able to do right after her cancer and the lymphedema onset. Yeah, this is why we do what we do. We like to make lives better for people. And one of the people on our panel that always makes life better is Lymphy Strong. And, you know, we want to tell you that there is a great community out there and you can connect with all different social groups to encourage you. We're honored that you joined us tonight or on the replay to encourage yourself Veronica, tell us what Lymphy Strong's mission is. You're muted right now, so we need you to unmute, but this always happens. Okay, Go so um, I didn't want to interrupt Cam when he was speaking. Uh, so Lymphy Strong started out as um, the original idea was, I founded it with my father and we wanted to spread awareness about multi-generational primary lymphedema, which is the hereditary form. I have lymphedema dyskinesis syndrome and it's run in my family for over a hundred years. But wow. as time wore on, this was in 2015 and I began to really just hear all kinds of incredible stories uh, from people all over the world, um, not only in the United States, but you know, and we have over a hundred countries represented in my main group today and almost 11,000 people. We started with 74. Um, we have people with lymphedema and lymphatic disorders of all types. We have people with lipolymphedema, with Durkheim's, with uh, May Turner syndrome. Um, all of these other diseases can uh, bring about the onset of lymphedema as a secondary condition. And, uh, you know, I just really strive to empower all of our group members and uh, let them know that they're not alone and yeah. that we, as you know, we, we, we run the group as people who are living with lymphedema. And so we try to help them as best we can navigate that path forward and find a way to advocate for themselves. You are a force for good in the lymphedema community and people can find you and follow you at Lymphy Strong, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Good. On Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And really I'm among friends here. Everyone on this panel is, uh, you know, a great advocate uh, with their own site. And I, I'm just really honored to be part of this group tonight. Well, you know, what's fun is we just bring everybody together and it is an opportunity for people to see like a buffet. There's so much you can choose from. We all have our individual personalities and it's just fun to gather together. The energy is always so good. Kelly, you want to say something, but you're muted. You're muted. I should just get a sign that says you're muted. I know you're muted, right? <laughs> um, I will tell you, um, Veronica, I was one of Veronica's original members. And yeah. if I found our group at a very important part of important time in my life, um, but it kind of let me know that I wasn't alone. And by being part of that group kind of encouraged me to do a lot of the advocacy stuff. And if it wasn't for her group, I don't know where, if I would be here now, to be honest with you, but she was the one that, so just so you know, you know, you make me emotional because that's, that's, not the first time you said that. I'm trying that. not to cry and too, just so you know. I, I'm no, no, trying no. not to cry because, you know, um, not to get very personal, but 
Kelly was very angry when he joined Limpy Strong. Um, he had a lot of uh, frustration over the years of going from doctor to doctor and his doctors not believing that he had this this disruption and, and how it, it had impacted his life. And we really worked together. Um, I just saw, saw so much in him and he's such an incredible human being. It, it, it's amazing to, to see, to be a part of and to have witnessed his transformation. Absolutely. Well, well thank I, you. It's so special. Thank you very much and for being there I, for me. And it's a perfect segue because I wanted to mention, Kelly, you had posted something on World Mental Health Day, and it was this, anger no longer consumes me. Anger is an anchor that becomes a safe place to hide from the storm, but no one gets on the ship of life to stay anchored in the harbor. How beautifully put that was. And you talked very candidly about the fact that you had to face that anger. I did. And as, as Veronica states, it, I was angry because mine was created by a simple 30 minute medical procedure that has been a 16 year journey battle for me. <laughs> and so I, after a while, like, and even being part of the group, I realized how angry I was and how that wasn't making me move, helping me move forward. And I made that decision that I need, need help. I need therapy. And I spent a year in therapy finding, like I tell people, like find your peace because like things are going to come this way. And when it hits you, like if you're already at in the rough seas that aren't even that you're creating, then you just add to them. And so find your peace. I mean, even recently with last couple of months, when I found out some issues with my kidneys from my lymphatic stuff, I was really disappointed. And I came home, my wife said, Jen said, hey, you know, it's going to be okay. And I looked at her and said, hey, give me today to be disappointed and upset. I promise you tomorrow I'll be okay. And then the next day you get off, you get out of the bed a different way. And you say, today I'm going to face this and move forward. But you can't let this disease like consume you like, well, you're not getting your compression garments. You're not getting your, like, just move, move forward. Like that's going to be, that's just part, unfortunately, it's still part of this journey. And that's why we all do what we do. I think that's so well put, and that's what we appreciate. Yes, we're here to uplift and encourage you and remind you that you're not alone, but we're not sticking our head in the sand either. We know it's tough. There are challenging moments emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually when you have lymphedema or any challenge in life. And so I think it's really great that you faced it with humility and vulnerability, Kelly. And as a result, you're helping so many people today. Before we even started tonight, he was saying he's working with this one patient and advocating for them. And your service to the community is amazing. So we, we love Thank and you. appreciate you, Kelly. I love everybody. Yeah. I want everybody. All the love. I feel the love. I feel the love and I feel hungry. I know, Betty, let's, let's do the hugs thing there. Angela, <laughs> you posted something on Facebook tonight. And once again, you got me hungry. Unmute yourself and tell us what's cooking in Angela's kitchen. You're muted. <laughs> well, we will, uh, let's try and get you unmuted. Okay. Hold okay, that. There, there you go. Good. Yeah. There we go. Um, it's been a, Rough week for me. Oh, Angela. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I decided I wanted to have a pity party most of the week. And luckily it's just, what, Tuesday? So I'm, I'm okay now, but I realized that I really was just, as Kelly said, I revisit anger from time to time and I revisit disappointment from time to time. And then I just have to pull myself out of it. And sometimes it's so difficult to do that. And I, I just, sometimes I just want to wallow in pity. So, and it's difficult to come back sometimes. You know, Angela, it's amazing to me because some of you know, I've been going through my own stuff recently. I suffered a loss in my life 
And every day I would get an email from Angela Jones asking me how I was, encouraging me and uplifting me. And to hear you say that you two were struggling, I had my head in the sand. I had no idea, but I just want you to know that you were a lifeline for me. And I hope that you know how loved and appreciated you are. You are a lifeline to us in many, many ways. Thank you. Thank you. And you still cooked. Like when I'm bummed out, you, I eat crackers, bread <laughs> crackers, stale orange crackers. That oh, are, no. Yeah. So, so with peanut butter? Yeah, those stale <laughs> peanut butter crackers. You know, everybody's got them in their closet. They're awful. Amanda just turned three shades awful. of purple, you know. But what, what were you cooking? Because it was awesome looking tonight. Um, blackened black and, um, salmon. And mufungo, which is a, a Puerto Rican dish made from plantains and garlic. And I'd never had it before. I just wanted to play around. So I made some. So just, just playing around. I wish I could play around. Can I, can you invite me over when you play around like that? Because, <laughs> sure. you know, it, it would, it would be really fun to be your house. By the way, we want to say to everybody out there, if you have questions about lymphedema, put them in the Q and A, we would love to answer them. We have Betty Westbrook and Nazarene Starner here, two medical professionals. We also have a fitness coach. We have a nutrition coach. We've got lymphedema experts here and patients who are, um advocating for their own lives as well as for the lives of others so please do feel free to put your questions in the q a we've got a lot of fun going on in the chat people are saying hey becky hey becky who's becky becky we're so glad you're here tonight thank you so much i also see leslin keith author of the lymphatic code who is in our audience tonight a woman i did an interview with who is just amazing blanche pepitone just go to our lymphedema channel we have got a boatload of really great interviews along with interviews with many of the people who are at the table tonight betty westbrook you just came out of the national lymphedema network conference what was a highlight for you and what did you learn and everybody else who was there i want to hear what your big takeaway was too well, one of the things that I learned at the NLN conference was that we have really great sponsors um, and vendors. I learned a whole lot from the different vendors booths that I visited. Um, I was so lucky that I was one of the presenters and I was part of the faculty for the NLN. And if this hand looks like it doesn't fit my body. I know, I'm like, what is doesn't. going on with that? Mm -hmm. I made these. This is a replica. This is Kyle. This is Kyle. He's nine years old. He has lymphedema. And I made life casting of one of our nine year old boys and one of our 12 year old girls. And I took them to the NLN with me because what's the craziest thing for CLTs who have never treated pediatric patients actually touching a pediatric patient? So, like, you can see his fingerprint. I could probably steal his identity if I wanted to, but I took Kyle with life me life. so everybody could practice and they'll not ever be scared of him again. That is so precious. I absolutely love that. And how did you make that? And I think we need to bring them to our in-services. When we, Cam's already probably thinking about how we can manufacture stuff like that. You've I've already thought of that, that as well. So if you want to buy them, they're for sale through the Pediatric Lymphedema Alliance. Very clever, very entrepreneurial of you, Betty Westbrook, but that's awesome. Right. We, we love the attention on pediatric lymphedema. It is uh, it deserves the attention. I see you nodding there, Amanda. And I, I want to talk about NLN, but I also want to ask you, Amanda, you were in the spotlight because one of your clients, a literal star in the lymphedema world, Amy Rivera. Well, why don't you tell the story? I really wish she was here. We're going to have to have her on. Um, it's really going to make me cry because she was never an athlete. I, it's funny because you hear her story and if anyone knows of her story or if you don't, her leg, the kids made fun of her, it was an elephant leg, which basically made her sit all throughout gym class. She was never an athlete. And when she started to get a better handle on her disease and go for her surgeries and get help, she did have 
personal trainers, but none that actually had lymphedema, which I do as well too. And watching her get up on stage, it was always a lifelong goal of hers. And I think I created a little mini athlete monster. Um, she just let it happen. Her confidence, her hard work, her determination. Um, we, I, I taught her so much stuff that she never even thought about when training with lymphedema, which was really, really exciting for her because we have a really great foundation to get her to her next competition. But so remarkable for the community just to show people that through perseverance, having an amazing support system, having people around you that know what they're doing and can educate you and guide you along the process. It's just, it's, I wish I was there. I got held up in customs. I got turned around. I wasn't allowed to go. Yeah. But yeah, but next time, hopefully we'll work out those glitches, but honestly to see her and just the the look on her face, I tell you what an inspiration for everybody in the lymphatic community. So I'm, I couldn't be more proud of her for sure. That's awesome. I love that. And yeah, we should have her at the round table one of these days soon. We have some questions coming in from the audience. Marie Laquidera. Marie, we're so glad you're with us tonight. Thank you for spending an hour with us. She has a question. Can lymphedema be reversed or just controlled? Now, I'm going to first pose that to our medical professionals, but I understand that some other members of the panel may want to weigh in on this. Can lymphedema be reversed or just controlled? Nazarene, you want to go first? Uh, sure, I'll go. Um, in my experience from where I'm at, we can do a great job with our complete decongestive therapy of, of controlling the lymphedema or at least managing it uh, as best as we can. There are some plastic surgeons currently who are working on lymphedema surgeries that their end goal is to work on finding a cure. I do believe in certain cases, and it's a small percentage, they have found a great amount of reversal of that lymphatic impairment. Uh, so there, there is hope heading towards the future for that. Great answer. Betty, do you want to weigh in as well? Yeah, and I'll, I'll hit on some of the points like, like Nazarene had mentioned, because reversal and cure I would say, I would caution that they're not exactly the same thing. Um, so there are some effects of lymphedema that with management, we can reverse some effects, but we can't get rid of that lymphatic issue as far as any damage that may have occurred um, to the lymphatic system, say if it's secondary lymphedema, or if you have primary lymphedema and you have um, a malformation or some other lymphatic system impairment, we can't undo that. Um, but with the CDT treatment garments, the bandaging, the exercise, the skincare, the whole thing um, involved in CDT, we can reverse some of those effects. Um, and the particular plastic surgeon, I was trying to get the word out, um, the particular plastic surgeon um, their findings of clinical cure, um, and he defines clinical cure as imaging shows improved lymphatic flow um, without the need of compression. So you have created little mini connections throughout your lymphatic and venous system to supplement that. So with surgery, there are ways to improve it, um, but he even really says cure cautiously and like it's not the goal. The clinical cure is just a bonus if you arrive at that, you know, island, um, but you're not going to be there with many people because clinical cure is um, less common, but improvement in lymphatic flow and decreased in cellulitis and infection occurrences, those can all be improved with some surgical intervention. About just lymphedema treatment, you can reverse some effects, but I wouldn't say you can cure or reverse lymphedema through treatment. It's a law. It's a lifelong management. Lifelong management. Is that what you were going to say as well, Angela Jones? I know you said that you wanted to answer the question as well. Um, the word that comes to mind for me is management. Management. And, and there's always a tool that you can use. You just have to find, create your own protocol. And the protocol today may not be the protocol tomorrow, but management is the word to keep in mind. It's very good. And Catherine, 
and then marry. So one thing to keep in mind, what works for one person's management may not work for somebody else's management. Mm -hmm. And as Angela said, what works for you on one day may not work for you on a different day. So you always have to keep an open mind to make sure that you're trying other things. If something is not working, don't give up because that's, you know, you need to really look to the future and see that you can do this. So it's super important to really keep that toolbox wide open and always add new tools in when you can. Well said. And Mary. Yes. Um, I have had six surgeries for my lymphedema um, and I get a lot of questions about them. And I think it's important when you're talking about uh, you know, surgeries and surgical interventions, and even just conservative treatment to remember that we all start on different levels. Mm -hmm. So depending on what's actually going on, which is causing your lymphedema, you know, one person might not have to wear a compression ever again after they have surgery, and that's great for them. Me, on the other hand, I was born with a very damaged uh, and lacking lymphatic system. So no compression was never really an option for me. The surgeries definitely made it easier to manage, made my uh, swelling reduce, which then helps my back, it helps mobility, overall increasing my quality of life. But it's important to note that it's not so cut and dry as in like, I can have surgery to fix this because we're all at different levels and we all have things that are causing our lymphedema that are different. I have yet to meet someone who is exactly the same lymphedema as I do. And I have proud to say that I know several, several lymphedema patients now. And Veronica, I know you want to jump in. Go for it. I was going to say exactly what Mary uh, just said, that we all start, you know, off at different points. But it's also important to remember that once that person achieves rejection, whether it's through conservative treatment or whether it's through surgery, let's believe that. Um, early on in, you know, in my advocacy and when I created my site, I had so many non-believers that sort of wanted proof that I went through CDT and I was constantly having to share my before after pictures. You know, let's say that that first two years, I was able to, uh, it took me a year uh, to achieve reduction first after CDT and then on my own, wrapping on my own and I didn't get onto social media until I was nine months into my journey. But uh, once, once the, I, I think it's important to emphasize that let's celebrate when that person achieves it, no matter how they got there, let's celebrate yeah. when they do reach that level. Really well said and important. People wanna feel heard and seen and not dismissed or questioned, absolutely. That's why we need advocates, people like you, and people to encourage you so that you can walk into your doctor's appointment armed with information and ready to be listened to. Armed? Are you holding up the arm, Betty, because I said armed, or do you have a question or a comment? Armed? I was armed. You're just being silly, right? <laughs> good. Well, we like a good amount of silliness here. We have a new friend out there tonight, Milton. Milton, we are so glad, Milton Garland, that you are with us. He has spina bifida, he has chronic venous insufficiency, and he has the lymphopress, and he's been using it for about three years, and it's been beneficial. Now, I don't, we want to make it clear, we don't offer medical advice on the round table, but maybe there is anecdotal information. He's asking if there is a contraindication to the vascularia pill and the lymphopress. Now, the lymphopress is pneumatic compression. It is not a drug in any way, shape, or form. So it wouldn't be that there would be a conflict drug against drug, but is there anything that our medical professional blah, 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 might want to add to that? Go ahead, Betty. Yes, with your little funny arm. I'm not familiar with the vascularia pill, but I would say that if the vascular pill is something that is to improve your vascular function, then there shouldn't be a contraindication, but I would, you know, ask the doctor, the podiatrist, um, who, uh, prescribe or who would be able to prescribe your lymphopress. 
Perfect. Yes. And Milton was aware that it's not a drug, the, the lymphopress is pneumatic compression, but still, I just wanted to make that distinction because we might have some people watching that aren't really fully familiar with lymphopress. Veronica, what did you want to add? I took Vascularia for over a year. Um, it's primarily indicated for uh, chronic venous insufficiency goes along with my lymphedema dyskinesis syndrome. Um, it is uh, essentially a really potent supplement, uh, vitamin supplement. The thing about vascular is it's very, very expensive. So it's, it's hard to sustain it over time. I did see improvement, but for me personally, the economic uh, impact, is, it just wasn't sustainable for me long-term. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. By the way, he does say that he was born in Puerto Rico and Angela Jones, he likes Mofongo. <laughs> so, you know, there we go. You got a fan and Milton out there. And again, Milton, we're so glad you joined us. We have another question that came in from the audience from Kathy Bennett. Hi, Kathy. We're so glad you're here tonight. She keeps getting sores on her legs. It took over 14 weeks to clear it up last time. She did cut back on the sodium. Anybody else here at the round table have issues with sores or experience with sores? Okay, Mary. Anything you wanna add about that or advice? Um, yep, sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. Uh, so I sometimes will get sores on the, the pinky toe side of my foot um, if I have too much compression. Um, so I actually am someone who does not tolerate night compression very well because of it. Um, I found that when my body is supine, so when I'm laying down, um, I don't think that my blood pressure um, or my circulation is quite good enough. So I tend, I would wake up with a burning sensation and have sores along that side of my foot. Um, one thing that I found really helpful is to keep that area from getting dry or cracked. So using really good lotion, um, you can also use essential oils. Um, obviously, you know, research them, um, but if you dilute lavender oil, uh, it has a lot of really heal good healing properties as far as for the side of your foot. Um, obviously, if you have sores that are non-healing, definitely go to a wound care clinic uh, as well. They are going to have a lot of really good tips and tricks for you. And fun fact, your lymphopress can actually help you to heal your wounds faster and decrease the risk of you having them open up again. So 14 weeks is a long time to go with any open sores. I definitely recommend you go to a wound care clinic. Yeah. Um, it could be that you're having too much compression though. So that is an op uh, a possibility. Interesting. And we had another friend out there, Bill Roy saying, yes, many times, lots of sores. Anybody else want to comment on the sword? Nazarene, go ahead. Oh, I, I haven't had any myself, but just with patients, oftentimes if they've been in garments, sometimes we just have to switch the garments and do bandaging again. And then they do have ulcer care garments that are, if you're more prone to that, that have a liner layer underneath before the compression sock goes over top. So that works really well for a lot of patients who maybe have this more fragile skin or a little bit more prone to that happening. But sometimes just visiting, aside from just the wound care center, if you have a therapist you've been with for a while, if this is something that frequently happens, you may need to get back, get decongested again, get your legs down or arms. I'm not quite sure where your sores are. And then maybe find a more appropriate garment for you at that time. Very good. Anybody else before we move on? Go ahead, Catherine. So I can actually attest to the fact that my lymphopress did help with wound healing for me. Um, last year, I had to have a um, surgical procedure that um, where they left the wound open and the doctor told me it was gonna take eight to 12 weeks for it to close properly. And it was completely closed in about six weeks because of the use of the lymphopress and getting the fluid out and preventing infection from happening. So it definitely does have that potential. Um, but it may not happen for every single person. So, but I just wanted to share that it did happen for me. So this way you don't think that this is just a myth that it could potentially happen, that it does help with wounds because it's kind of 
seems strange that compression would help to close to heal a wound. You would kind of yeah. think it would kind of open it back up, but it actually heals it because it gets the fluid out of the area. Well said. Yeah, that's so true. There, there are so many benefits to using your lymph press. I'm interested to know of those of you who are out there, do you have a lymph press? Put a yes or a no in chat. We can know who out there actually is using their pneumatic compression pump. 81 year old Judith Doctor, what a great name. Judith Doctor uh, is in the audience and she had her leg degloved, grafts took well, her knee has no feeling, she's left with lymphedema. She's using decompression stockings and the lymph press. Good for you. We are cheering you on. She says she has lots of questions. Well, we hope to have answers for you and we'd love to answer more of them. Uh, feel free to put them in chat. Mar so many people. Yeah, Francis Graham has the lympha jacket. Marlisha Johnson, yes. And Brylin, Brylin from Brylin's feet absolutely has a lympha press. Linda Lehman, good, wonderful, excellent. If jacket and pants, our friend Stephanie Roach, Alexa, you know her because she is all over social media and we so appreciate you, Stephanie. We love when people put candid comments about their experience. And our friend Becky, who everybody loves, everybody's saying, hi, Becky, she doesn't. So we need to talk, Becky. Feel free to reach out to us afterward. We'd love to help. Alexa, you went to NLN and you were a shining star in our booth. What was your big takeaway? You've been managing your lymphedema forever. Was there anything new that you learned? Well, you know, I thought this NLN was really interesting because it was more um, therapist focused and it was classes um, for the therapists and Betty and Veronica know that too, because they were in those um, cam as well. But um, it, it's always refreshing to go to conferences and see the groundswell of just people that are invested in us as patients, being there as a patient, as well as with Lymphopress. Um, it's really heartening to know that there's so many people in our corner because a lot of times we feel like we're alone. We feel like there's no one who understands us. We've been misdiagnosed or passed around, you know, doctor to doctor. So it's a good reminder to see that there are people out there who are not only interested in helping us, but continuing to learn new ways to help us more effectively. Um, and it's also like summer camp, seeing a lot of my favorite faces. Um, you know, it's, it's the one time I really get to see a lot of the people in the community. So, I mean, we're online all the time together, but seeing them in person, it's like catching up with with friends, you know, after a long time apart. So that's always really rejuvenating too. Well, you brought so. a lot of creativity to our booth. The theme was a mysterious experience in lymphology. I think that's what it was. Yeah. I think I said that correctly. And Alexa dressed up like Sherlock Holmes for us. Yeah. She had these candy <laughs> licorice pipes to give away with a magnifying glass. They were very glass. popular. I love yeah. to commit to a bit, so. Well, you know, she was <laughs> all in. She was a method actress and she yeah. handled the role beautifully. So that was really <laughs> cool. Veronica, you got wrapped. Now you've clearly been bandaged before. But yes. you had an expert bandaging lab done on your arm. And that was a new experience for you, wasn't it? It was a totally new experience. I mean, just to add on to what Alexa said, I was just uh, totally in awe of all of the therapists who went. My job, um, for those that are unaware, what, uh, I was an NLN ambassador. So my job was to lead a cohort of about 22 clinicians through all 10 labs over five days. So I got to know these clinicians very well and they were practicing the bandaging led by Steve Norton and the Norton School of Therapy. So my partner wrapped my hand and my arm, you know, from fingertips to the shoulder. I was really surprised at the lack of mobility that I had and at that moment, it very, it hit me very profoundly about, you know, that I couldn't wash my hands and maybe I wouldn't be able to do something that required a lot of dexterity. Um, and honestly, I wanted to take it off. You know, I've been bandaged countless times from, from the toes up to my thighs, but after about 15 minutes, I was really ready to just, 
unwrap. It was, it was very disconcerting wow. for me. And I didn't expect that feeling. Yeah, you know, as as a lifelong lymphy, or you know, I've had lymphedema for 27 years, and I've been actively maintaining it since 2014. I really didn't think it was going to be a big deal to wrap my arm, but it really hit me in a profound way, and it was emotional, yeah. and I didn't expect that. Wow, thanks for sharing that. I see you nodding to Mary. You know, speaking about those. Mm, experiences you had a compelling post on social about going to the pool and for those of you who don't follow live lump love lymphy that's mary castleberg what was that all about yeah um so it looks like i'm frozen i got it um so i talked to a lot of people with lymphedema just throughout social media and through my job now. And, um, I was talking to one woman in particular, and she said that she had a bachelorette weekend coming up and the bride wanted to do it at a pool and how anxious she was. And so the next day I was sitting at my apartment pool and, um, I looked at my boyfriend, I said, Hey, can you take a picture of me? And he, and I very rarely do this. I don't like pictures of myself, but he obliged and took a picture um, and I wanted to just kind of highlight the fact that sometimes with lymphedema, we give up, um, you know, we give up the things that we enjoy or that we really want to do because we're afraid of what other people think, or, you know, I truly feel like I being diagnosed at 12 years old, lymphedema took a lot of spontaneity out of my life. It made us have to kind of look ahead and prepare. And so you know, I'll never forget my, um, I went to a party with my cousins several years ago and it was a pool party and I didn't know that it was going to be a pool party. And I was just like, oh no, I don't have my gloves to put my stocking back on. Like, do I take it off and like, and take it back, put on, cause it's really hard to put on wet skin or do I, and finally I got to the point where I was like, wear an old stocking, jump in the water with it. It's going to be okay. And then you have to deal with, you know, people looking and, um, I had, <laughs> I had an instance where I was actually on a cruise ship and had some, some girls around my age uh, talk about me and I could actually hear them talking about me. And I looked down at my leg and was like, oh no, what's wrong? <laughs> um, which is, you know, I, I chose to kind of use humor to teach a lesson to these girls that like, we hear you and we see you. Um, the way I think about it is if anything, I'm, I'm teaching people that anyone who's different, just because you don't understand someone understand why someone is wearing something or why they're in a wheelchair. It doesn't mean that you have the right to say anything or to stare. Um, and so you kind of have to put on your little, you know, your tough skin and say, what's more important, me sitting on the sideline and missing out on a really beautiful day where I want to be in the pool just because I don't want to put, you know, have to deal with the anxiety of it and have people stare, or am I going to really take control of my life? And when people do stare, or when people ask questions, use it as a way to educate um, or just remind yourself that, you know, you don't have to have all the friends in the world. It, you Quality over quantity, <laughs> for sure. And the people who, who care aren't really going to be worth your time anyway. Mm, so true. You're nodding, Alexa. You're nodding, Cam. Been yeah, there, I was that? just going to say, well, I had the opposite experience um, from Mary. So when I was uh, in the beaches of Mexico looking for love and Bachelor in Paradise, it was really, really hot out there. And I made the decision to not be compliant. So I didn't wear my garments at all out there. And I paid the price for it. It was really, really hot. And more importantly, I feel like I missed an opportunity to bring more awareness to lymphedema because that could have been an opportunity for someone who watched the show, well, you know, why is Cam wearing, you know, a black garment and it's, you know, hundred degrees outside. And I just remember laying in, in bed every night when we were out there filming and my leg would just be throbbing and it was hot, but I was so ashamed and so embarrassed when you're in this environment with these perfect people that I was going to be seen as less if I was out there looking for love with my compression on. And after I got off the show and started doing advocacy and now working for Lymphopress, like, I think, the compliance and the the medical benefits I feel from wearing my garments 
mm-hmm. 365, like living in Houston, it's just as hot as it was in Mexico. But even in the heat of summer, if I'm going to the pool, just like Mary, I'm always wearing my compression. And that's important for me to not only have my own like self image and positivity, but like to manage the condition. So if guys, girls out there, if you're, you know, not super comfortable wearing it out in public, you know, it's going to take time. It took me 32 years to get to that point and that's okay. But once you do, it is very liberating. So I think every person's journey, no matter what it is, is really the path to self-acceptance and self-love. And when you get to that point where you accept yourself and love yourself, then what everybody else says or thinks doesn't matter as much. You know, it's none of your business what you think of me. It's only my business what I think of me. But that's so good because I'm sure there are many people in our audience tonight that are challenged with that very thing. We want to encourage you to love yourself, to accept yourself. You matter. You are seen. You are worthy. If we just said that on a loop for the entire hour, that would be well worth it. I also have been duly schooled here because Becky Sharp is on the lymphedema advocacy board for the LTA trying to get Medicare and insurances to pay for compression garments. Well, who's the dummy in the crowd here? I'm so sorry, Becky. I didn't remember or realize who you were, but we are so grateful for the work that you do out there in advocacy for the lymphedema community. So Frances Graham is leaving the country for a week and cannot take her jacket. She has a compression garment, but might need extra support. Any suggestions for managing the edema while she's leaving the country? Go for it, Catherine. I see you. So my first suggestion is I I saw that you said that you can't bring your compression jacket. And um, I would encourage you to be able to place that into a carry-on or a check baggage so that this way you have it if you need it and have a flare while you're away that you can control it. Um, It is safe to go through the um, x-ray machine at the airport. I do it all the time. Um, And you can get it in a carry-on bag and it does not count against your carry-on because it is a medical device. Mm, Great point. And one thing I'll add too. um, So I know you, Miss Graham. I'm happy you're on here and you're like in my backyard. So with the lymphopress devices, because they're manufactured in Israel, when you receive the pump, the power supply cord actually comes with a converter for European outlets. So if you're going somewhere overseas that has European outlets, you absolutely can bring your lymphopress and utilize it there. And I would encourage you to do so. And if you lost that piece, you know how to reach me. I can get you one. All right, sounds like a plan. Cam's got the plan, Francis. Go ahead, Nazreen. I I like everybody's suggestions about bringing your lymphopress with you. And I've had many patients who've called the airlines ahead of time in the country they're going to as well, just to make sure that they don't have any problems there. I I do tell patients though, just in case there are any hiccups to, you know, really do a great job of maybe increasing their times they're doing their manual lymph drainage. If there's somebody who typically wears compression garments, you might want to bring your bandages with you. So that way you can try bandaging yourself if you do have an increase in swelling after the flight as well. Perfect. Perfect. And we know that you've been traveling, Angela, and you take your lymphopress. So does Kelly. Betty, what were you going to say? Well, I was just going to say from one of our last roundtables, the link that Catherine shared with us, I have kept that tab opened in my phone just to like airdrop it or text it quickly to someone. So I just copy and pasted that here. I think I just lost it. It was into the chat for Francis, um, that TSA.gov special procedures travel stuff. I've been using that. So yeah, um, it's there if you need it and hopefully it will help you get through a little bit quicker. I want to yeah. they do definitely quick. help just to make sure you call ahead of time and they will get you to and fro the gate uh, with very limited issues. Yeah, I actually, and Betty knows because we ran into each other in the airport after the NLN, but I had reached a a lymphedema milestone and my lymphedema set off the x-ray scanner at at TSA for the first time. And I'd never had that happen before. And they got got pat down and everything. And it was, it kind of shocked me. It surprised me how 
I, I felt so emotional after that because it never happened to me before. And I felt really kind of embarrassed too and very kind of violated even because I'd never, uh, people have checked my hair before and patted that down when it's up because it can be kind of big, but never my leg. And um, they asked me, you know, to remove my garment and I said, no, but Betty and Catherine, I think it's the same link you're talking about. It's this card you can print out that you can hand to the TSA agent that says, I have a medical condition. You know, that's, that's what it is. It's not a bomb. It's just my <laughs> protein and lymphatic fluid or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, that, that might happen if it hasn't to you yet, but just be prepared. <laughs> and, you know, speaking of travel, there is this almost viral TikTok video of you, Alexa, putting together your lympha press for travel. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> they think the box is so smart. It's so smart. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a few people that have logged on. Martha from Maine says, thank you to all the panelists for all that you do for the community. She is waiting for 2022 to get her insurance uh, in queue to take care of the lymph press. Here's my motto for 2022. In 2022, our dreams will come true. Anybody else in there for me, with me? Woo! Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Maxiel Maldonado. I love that name. I want to dance with you, Maxiel. <laughs> Waiting to get his lympha press for his lower secondary lymphedema from a double hip replacement. He's hoping his insurance will authorize it soon. He wears stockings daily and nightly garments. And, you know, we so appreciate those of you who are doing what it takes to manage your condition, anything left to itself tends to random and lymphedema unmanaged is not your friend. So everybody here who has lymphedema has made it part of their protocol. What is the one tip? All right. As we are starting to run out of time, what's one tip you would give someone about managing their lymphedema? Who wants to go first? No. Yeah. None of you, right? <laughs> I'll go first because it's go actually ahead, kind of an answer to Judith's question. So Judith had just put a question in here saying that she's interested in measuring her leg. She's never done it. And she's not currently seeing her therapist. Um, would learning to measure her leg be helpful? And I would say absolutely yes. Even if you're not learning to measure at certain increments, like your therapist measured, if you have three or four spots that you can reach consistently and you can measure yourself. Um, I think that's really helpful. So if I'm trying to lose weight, how do I measure myself? I have to get on a scale or I have to try on my jeans. I can't just look in the mirror and go, yeah, you look kind of bloated today or yeah, you look like you gained five pounds or whatever. I need to be able to physically measure and track. And mm. I think that's one of the best things that you can do for managing at home because feeling you can feel it sometimes, but sometimes you need to see it. You need to see that measurement and know the difference to know where you need to be spot treating. So I would say one of my tips would be to be able to measure yourself, get a measuring tape, a soft measuring tape, and just take some measurements at points that you can consistently reach. Perfect. Judith says, thank you. And Mary, did you want to add anything to that? Or are you just in full agreement? Um, I will say, so I don't know about the rest of the lymphies on this round table, but I have a ton of anxiety against getting measured because I am super type a. And so whenever someone would measure me, I like stare at the numbers and just hope they go down and beat myself up if they go up. Um, so I would like to say, Judith, I do think it's a great idea to measure. Don't measure super frequently, like don't measure every day or every other day, because sometimes environmental things happen where you are going to have some of that fluctuation and try your best to look at it as data instead of a personal reflection on how you're doing. Mm. If you're doing everything that you can be doing, um, you know, the humidity, stress, uh, the activities that you might be doing, it can be a guideline. Um, but I know for me personally, I would take it really hard on myself if my measurements were up a little bit. Um, and, and that, that can kind of throw you the opposite end where then you get really discouraged and, um, you know, decide to throw your hands up. So definitely keep it as a toolkit. I usually recommend, you know, I, I try and measure myself like once a month is kind of how, how I like to track it. 
Um, if you do it too much, it just can be a little bit anxiety uh, invoking, at least for type A people like myself. <laughs> And one I, quick thing on measurements, yeah. we do have a free app. It's called Lympha Track by Lympha Press. So go to your app stores and that's a great way to digitally house all your measurements. So you can kind of have a journal of that to check in and or just a way to have it all in one central place. So yeah, check it out, Lympha Track. Lympha Track, this is a tip of Palooza. Go ahead, Kelly. Um, one tip I want to give anybody that has lymphedema is to keep up, this is an evolving science. The national, the NLN conference, all these conferences, whatever you can get in, get your hands on information on. And I think this is a perfect time for me to bring up the innovative solutions for uh, lymphedema and lymphedema virtual symposium on October 22nd to the 24th. Just Google that um, and you'll find the link um, because there's always new information. And I'm just trying to say, I, every, to stay up on top of the information because things are changing often. They are. And we'll send you all the link. Anybody who registered will send you a follow-up email with the link because Lympha Press is a sponsor and we'd love for you to be there. Go ahead, Amanda, and then Nazreen. Biggest thing is just because if there's no cure doesn't mean there's nothing you can't do about it. We are all living proof and examples that we had to find our own way. We've linked arms, we've shared stories, but we kept on going. If it doesn't work for you, that's okay. Keep going and find out what does. Keep going, I love it. Nazreen and then Catherine. I was just gonna agree with Kelly that um, if you're managing at home, it's it, keep looking out for what there is. I have a patient that she comes to see me every single year and it's probably been 10 years. And every year there's a new garment that works better and better for her. And actually I am getting her a lymphopress pump because she is now yeah yay so that's a great pump for her and it's worked really well so excellent Catherine. so one of my favorite things to have people take away is that you can't limit your challenges with lymphedema you have to really kind of challenge your limits to see where you can go and not hold back excellent and would you agree with that one alexa or do you have another tip i totally agree with that one um and i think too you know Stay elevated, uh, both physically and with your your mental, emotional health. You can't um, you can't let that slip. It's just as important as your physical health. Um, the mental health goes hand in hand. So you have to make sure in keeping so much care and attention to yourself, your leg. You're not forgetting yourself, your mind, and your your spirit with all of this too, because that's a that's a key part. And I know that you probably have something you want to say, Angela, but I was struck by what you said on social. And Veronica, I'm going to give you the last word because you are our special guest of honor. What you said on social, Angela, was when the rubber hits the road, every challenge should lead us to? Learning, really. It should lead us to learning. It should lead us to gathering because what I figured out about rubber hitting the road on, in any vehicle, rubber hits the road, any part of rubber hits the road for just a minute. The whole rubber doesn't hit it one time. And we usually can take just that minute to fix whatever it is that's bothering us or whatever the issue is. So I'm going to say for me, attitude is my biggest tool at any given time. Because when I look at where the rubber hits the road, I just lose it sometimes, to be honest. And so I have to say my attitude, because to piggyback off what Alexa said, you know, it doesn't matter what other tool you have. If the attitude's not there, the tool's not going to do the best that it can do for you. So I say attitude. Perfect. And our dear friend, Veronica, we honor you and thank you for being here. Lymphy Strong, bring it on home. What's your tip to end the round table? My tip to end the round table is you are braver and you are stronger than you ever think. Um, I, I, I've known and I've met people from around the world in person and virtually and the, the strength and the testament of the human spirit to overcome seemingly insurmountable odds and obstacles is just amazing. You know, my father survived a hundred bouts of cellulitis. And I know people on this panel who struggle equally, but every day they get up and they fight the next day. And I do want to say, join a support group. Yeah. It doesn't have to be online. If 
you, know, you can find one um, with your therapist or even, you know, confide in your best friend or a family member. Lean on someone for support um, because you don't have to do it alone and you're not alone. Perfect way to end. You are not alone. It is our honor every month to gather together. This is one of the most inspiring lymphedema roundtables. We do it every second Tuesday of every month. Judith Doctor said, I wish I'd found you months ago. We wish you had too, but you're here now. So we are happy to welcome you to this Lympha Press community. It's our honor to serve you. If you ever want to know anything more about Lympha Press, please email me or any one of our panelists. But Lympha Press, Brenda, what is my email? B Viola. B Viola. B Viola <laughs> at lymphopress.com. Thank you, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the month and we'll see you in November. Bye. Thanks, Bye -bye. everybody. You're Bye -bye. awesome.